This is great for colour grading, but it's even better for using as an onset uh, monitoring tool in place of a light meter. And I've tested this, if you export a LUT and you put it onto your monitor, it does work. So for a while now I've been using false colour as an exposure tool. You can see here I've got up a picture of uh, Blackmagic's uh, false colour spectrum going all the way from the sensor's minimum amount of data all the way to the highest end of data. It's really good for finding out where middle grey is and where you're beginning to clip on the low and the high end but it's not so good at where physical light values in the scene are relative to each other. We think of light in stops. One stop is a doubling of light. When you set your aperture on the lens, you think it stops. When you set the ISO, you think it stops. Communicating with a gaffer or someone like that, you'd say, I'm shooting at T4, expose the skin, a stop above middle gray, and I want the dark side of the face to be uh, three stops darker than the light side of the face. In order to do that, you use a, a light meter. Uh, but a lot of us these days don't have light meters because we have moved over to digital and we're using our monitors to, to do this. But I thought to myself, I would really appreciate the ability to change color every stop of light. I would know much more precisely where the light ratios and the contrast ratios in the scene are, and it would be easier to match from shot to shot. Say if I want a, a contrast ratio of, of one to four or one to eight or something, and you want that to be consistent. If I had that as a tool, I'd be able to dial that in very precisely with, without using a light meter. I can just use the monitor. Uh, turns out, as with most good ideas, somebody else has done it first. And the guy that's done that is uh, a cinematographer by the name of Ed Lackman. And what he's done is, you can see it here. You have middle gray, and then each stop above and below gets a different colour. And you can see an example here. He has his face lit into the yellow zone, which is one half to one stop above middle grey. And you can see the dark side of his face is about a stop or two stops even uh, in places below middle grey. So you have a contrast ratio of about one to four or one to eight. And as you can see, middle gray is bang in the middle, the gray card he's holding. How, how do you use this system? Now, Mr. Lackman has envisioned this as uh, something that gets programmed into your monitor, into your camera as a function. You press a button and it goes into this, much in the way uh, that false color works. Um, although this one will be consistent uh, across all monitors, across all cameras, because stops of light or a physical property, whereas um, IRE values, um, false colour, uh, is varies from sensor to sensor. And so far, this system has been picked up by Small HD, the monitor company. You may have seen videos popping up on YouTube recently. There is also uh, the Sigma FP has that as a function in the camera, and I believe Panasonic's Varicam has that built in as well. Uh, but so far, not much more than that. See, I think this is a great system and I wanted to use it myself but I don't have a small HD or a Sigma FP or a Panasonic and I also want to use it in post. I can see this being a really useful tool for matching shots within a color grading project. So I thought well it's a simple enough concept, I understand the maths, so why don't I just make something myself? So I did. And this is... that's not it. And this is that thing. Uh, I'm just going to take you through the code now so you understand how it works. It's very simple, but if, if you're not interested in, it, in how it works, and I've put timestamps in the video, just skip ahead to the bit where I show you how to use it in Resolve. Uh, but if you're interested, I'll explain it now. So to start with, uh, this is a DCTL, which is a, a basically a, a programming language. It allows you to write scripts that Resolve can understand and you can do highly customized color transformations within Resolve. The device float3 transform, that is, has to be in every DCTL and basically it gives you the inputs for each pixel. Pixel goes in, pixel goes out. And the variables that are attached to each pixel are, its, uh, are the, the width and height of the whole frame uh, and its position in X and Y, and then finally it's R, G, R, red, green, and blue values. Uh, those are what we're using today. We're not using any of the others. So here I have a float three. I'm just creating a single variable that has um, uh, all three in, um, red, green, and blue. 
and then I'm making an out variable, which is the, the pixel that will send out. And I'm creating another variable here called luminance. And all that is, is a way to calculate um, a, a luminance, a single luminance value out of all three uh, red, green, and blue channels, because technically you have three different brightness values that are being detected by the camera, one for each one for each color. Um, but we need to uh, we need to analyze that in a way that only has one. And according to ChatGPT, these values, this equation is how you do that based on the sensitivity of the human eye. Green is the most sensitive at uh, 0.7152 uh, uh, weighting and blue is, is not very sensitive at all and, and red is less sen is more sensitive but less than green. Anyway, this bit of maths here creates a single variable between 0 and 1 which is your luminance. After that, I'm oh, sorry, we have one more float which is MG stands for middle grey. Middle grey is uh, a, f a physical reflectance uh, brightness, your grey card that you hold up. And in linear space, that's always 0.18. What follows are just a series of if statements. Basically, if the luminance value is detected to be between certain values, it gets assigned a single colour. We have 17 different ranges for colours in this chart. And so we have 17 if statements here each one defining the zone. So if luminance is greater than or equal to um, middle gray times two to the power of 6.5, which is mathematically, that just means 6.5 stops above middle gray, then it gets assigned these colors, uh, which is, I've written this in 8-bit, 8-bit uh, color RGB, uh, because that was easiest for me to, I just put the chart into Photoshop and I use the colour picker tool and I just put the value straight into there. And then at the end here we uh, we divide the value in the out, out is equal to the new pixel but divided by 255 because Resolve expects a value between 0 and 1. It's not working in 8 bits, it's working in percentage or brightness. So, And that's all that is and we have here you can see between 5.5 and 6.5, 4.5, 5.5 and so on, and each each grouping gets a different colour. And uh, that's it really, it's not that complicated at all. And then it just simply returns the value that it comes out with, return out, and uh, that's it. So now I'm going to show you how to use it. I made a test scene where it's just me sitting next to my fireplace on the sofa. Scarlett Johansson was going to do it, but something came up. You can see here, I've popped the uh, the um, exposure chart down at the bottom here. That's just an image on the timeline above. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now, the DCTL expects a linear signal. So we need to get from Panasonic's log image into linear. And the way we do this is with a color space transform. So if you just search for color space transform, it will show up, drag it onto your node and I'm going to turn it on here. Uh, as you can see it looks horrible but that's because it's just not being displayed properly and you need to use your the input color space you need to set to the cameras uh, what you shot it in so for me that's Panasonic V-Log and V-Gamut. If you shot Sony you'd be an S-Log and um, Cinetone or whatever it is you're shooting. If you shot red it would be uh, whatever red color three or four or if you're in black magic it would be um, wide gamut 4.5 possibly uh, whatever you shot it in and you need to set the output color space to exactly the same and then the output gamma to linear and this is very important you need to make sure tone mapping is on none i believe by default it will be da vinci and that's wrong because when we turn on el zone you can see that these highlights are clipped way way below where they should be for instance this lamp Apparently it's only one stop above the left side of my face, which is definitely wrong because it's it's a lamp. Um, so if we turn that off and then turn uh, the EL zone back on, you can see that actually it's it's about five or six stops over my face, which you know is is correct. So uh, and then I'm just going to turn this off because I, I I jumped the gun a bit here. You need to search for DCTL in the effects and you need to drag that onto your project and then find find the DCTL, EL zone linear input is what I've called this and then turn it on and you can see here we have a 
just like that, an EL zone representation of the scene, which is uh, which is great. Uh, so now, when you match between shots, so you have another shot, you know that to get the right exp the, to match the exposure on the skin, if you wanted to do that, you need to have the skin be at um, the second yellow level at plus one stop, and. You might, if you're playing with the contrast to match between lenses, then you know the dark side of the face needs to be at dark green, which is um, two stops below. So that's a one to eight contrast ratio on my face there. If you're a colorist, then you, you probably understand uh, why this can be so useful. Um, instead of eyeballing every, every shot to, to get the um, exposure dialed in and the contrast dialed in and, and matching them, you can now have this tool. So. Um, but you can't use it like this. How do you use it as part of a grade? So I will show you in this next clip I have. I've set up a grade that I might use. I have assigned the clip to a group. You see here we have clip and we have group post clip. You'll do your scene specific stuff in the clip section and then you'll move over to the group post clip to do your color grade that will be applied to all the clips universally and any changes will, will, will work across any clip that's in your group. Um, hopefully this all isn't new for you and this is this is how you operate already. So what I do is I do the clip stuff in linear. I do have my CST going from Panasonic to linear and then I have an exposure DCTL to very precisely work exposure. If you can see here, if I go down one stop this bright yellow should become grey and you can see it does. And then from there um, I do all my white balance and contrast and window corrections. I, I think of it as changes that I'm making to the scene as if I had shot it differently, if there's a bit of negative fill or uh, and so on. So then you move over to uh, post clip and I add any effects that I prefer to do in linear space here. I do a CST going from linear to a log color space that I want to grade in. That might be Arri Log C, or it might be DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, uh, whatever you like to color grade in. Um, and then you apply your your look, your your tone curves, um, split toning, your know, saturation, all that stuff. And then you have a, your final CST going to Rec 709, which goes here. Now you may notice this over the top. What I'm doing here is I'm grabbing the linear signal and I'm sending it through a, a gray card. And then that's going to EL zone DCTL. So, and this is a this is a layer node. So basically, what this does is it overwrites completely everything else that's going on here. So if I turn this on, it comes on, and you can see it's not being affected by the CST or or any of this stuff. And we just have uh, your scene with exposure values. And if I turn on grey card here, you can see that this is perfectly mapping to middle grey and uh, plus half stops and plus stops and so on going all the way up and all the way down. This is a, this uh, grey card by the way is, a, is another DCTL. I didn't make this one, I, I downloaded it off GitHub somewhere. Um, I don't recall where, I'm sorry. This DCTL is in the uh, description of the video by the way, if you want to download it. So yeah, that's how I would incorporate it in into a workflow. Just turn this off and on depending on when I want to use it as a reference and it's nice and convenient. One final thing that I want to cover, this is great for color grading, but it's even better for using as an onset uh, monitoring tool uh, in place of a light meter. So how do you how do you get that if you don't have a small HD or a uh, Sigma FP or uh, something that supports it? Like I personally don't own any of those uh, any of those items and I, I probably won't anytime soon. Uh, well you can just export a LUT and I've tested this. If you export a LUT and you put it onto your monitor, it does work. It isn't as crisp. Um, I will admit that the, the edges between uh, the different colors, they're not as defined as they would be if you did it in the mathematical way that I'm doing it through the DCTL here. So if I, if I go in here, you can see I've got all my clips here on the right. And if you right click, it's as simple as this. Just uh, right click, generate LUT. And I found that the higher the point value, um, the more clean the edges between colors are. So, so I use a, a 65. Uh, I'm just going to save that. So then all you need to do is you need to go into your LUTs and you need to find 
I'm just going to turn off EL zone here. I'm going to turn off the linear transform because this works directly through VLOG now. So if I add in, if I add in, add in a node before, drag your LUT onto it, and voila! Just like that, it works, and it will work the same on your monitor, on your camera. Um, as you can see, you can see it's starting to get a bit fuzzy. Um, I believe that's to do with the resolution of the LUTs, because if I watch what happens if I, this is a 65 point LUT, if I swap this for 33 points, you get this. And you see it gets even, even mushier. You can still use it. Um, it's still, you can still clearly see where the exposures are. Uh, but yeah, it's not as good as it would be if you're using a small HD monitor or the built-in functionality. Um, the other problem with this approach is that most, um, I found that all the monitors I have, all the cameras I have, they only let you put one LUT on at a time uh, to like a quick select button. Uh, so the workaround I've been doing is I've been putting the the monitoring, um, the, the, the EL zone LUT, I've been putting that on my monitor and then I've been putting my Rec 709 viewing LUT on the camera and I just, uh, I use both together to, to quickly switch between them. Obviously that's not nearly as useful as, as having uh, a separate button because it means you need to turn off the look from one camera uh, before you before you turn on the the EL zone look on your your monitor. Um, but it's it's certainly functional enough that um, I can use it. So uh, hopefully that's been helpful to you. Yeah, uh, it's it's certainly been interesting and, and helpful to me, and that's why that's the sort of stuff that I like. I'm going to be putting on this channel. It's just stuff that I was doing anyway, but I film it and put it on YouTube in case it's useful to anybody else. So uh, download the DCTL in the description below. Uh, have a play with it. If if any of you do download this, um, uh, make your own LUTs or use use one of the LUTs that I've uh, exported here. If you could grab a grey card and, and test, that would be really helpful because I haven't actually been able to confirm technically if this if this works. In theory everything should work, um, but until I shoot a grey card I won't know for sure I suppose, but if one of you could do it for me I'd be really, uh, I'd really appreciate it and just uh, leave, a, leave a comment saying it works. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's it.